So welcome to this session about uh, the OWASP juice shop. Um, as I said, I will I will start with some facts about the juice shop that you will that will definitely surprise you. And this is of course not clickbait. Uh, if you have participated in a previous talk or video, have watched a video about the basics of juice shop, then now is the best time to get uh, a five minute break to make a nice fruit smoothie or get a coffee or, or something similar. So, because I will show some basics now. This is the OWASP juice shop. When you started, I already prepared a little bit by, by already logging in. So we don't take too much time here. As you can see, it's, a, it's an e-commerce application where you can buy fruit related stuff or juice related stuff and also some other things. So you could, for example, just search for, I don't know, orange maybe because I'm interested in buying some orange juice, putting that into my basket here. Uh, I could also, let's see, uh, look for OWASP related things. So I could actually get my uh, anniversary ticket from here. Unfortunately, no more face masks. I can get a, a hoodie maybe, right? So let's let's see. I will now go to my shopping basket and I have a very, very perfect rounding system in, in, the, in, the, in the price calculation here. So I will check out this now, pick my shipping address, pick a delivery speed. So I really want that hoodie very fast. So one day delivery it is, continue. Um, adding a new card. Now I use my existing my existing credit card that, that I already saved. So let's use this one. Place your order and pay. Here we go. Looks good. And I even get a link to a tracking page already where I can see how far my order is. Isn't that great, right? So that's that's basically the main use case of the juice shop. So you can buy stuff. Of course, you will never get it, but on the good hand, uh, on, on the other hand, you also don't really have to pay for stuff. So it's 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 a it's a playground e-commerce application. It also has tons of other functionalities, but we will not go into those today. The interesting, most interesting part of the juice shop, of course, is that it's more than just a web shop, right? It's a it's a vulnerable web application with a total of 100 different hacking exercises, or we call them challenges that you that you actually have to solve. And when you successfully do that, um, your, your progress will be tracked on our internal scoreboard. Actually finding the scoreboard is the first challenge that users normally have to solve, but we will skip this part and dive directly into it. So you can see here different types, uh, different different challenges uh, grouped by different categories. And you can see that I already solved a few of them. Um, we will we will now try to do a little bit of cross-site scripting, right? That, that shouldn't take too long. So perform a DOM-based XSS. You can click on this little icon here to start a tutorial that will help you to solve this challenge. So then our little, um, our little uh, helper bot shows up and will give us a, some, a few hints what we should do actually. So, and he tells me to actually type in OWASP in the search bar. So let's do that, hit enter. Okay, see OWASP related product, related products now, perfect. So, and the search term is, re, is shown over here. Yeah, that's true, I see that. So now we will try some cross-site scripting and the bot now says, okay, please type H1 OWASP hit enter. And as you can see, now the page looks a little bit broken, right? So that's that's not good. So it now gives me the hint that I could actually investigate in the in the source code of the um, of, of in the DOM tree basically what happened here. But yeah, you probably already know that this H1 tag was not properly uh, encoded or escaped. And that means we can do some cross-site scripting too. So the bot now says, okay, you can try this, this little attack here with the script tag. And it seems I copied a bit too much. Okay, let's go. And nothing happened, ah, too bad. But there's other payloads to try. For example, this one, let's pick this one instead. And, Boom, here we go, cross-site scripting. 
seems to work, right? And you can see it shoots confetti and it gives me now a notification also here at the top that I successfully solved one of the challenges. The little bot congratulates me. And yeah, basically that's, that's one of the ways to actually get known to the juice shop and to try it out. If you are not familiar with it yet, um, use these little helpful hints, uh, helpful scripts that actually guide you through some of our easier challenges. And on the scoreboard, we will now notice that this DOM XSS challenge is marked as solved. Okay, so now the topic of the day, the actual topic, it's coding challenges because we have something brand new available in the juice shop. When you solved a challenge, um, one of the hacking exercises, basically, then if this kind of button is, exists, then it will be enabled, right? You can see that for many other challenges, there's a disabled button here. And if I click on this button, it will give me a completely different kind of exercise after loading the responsible, uh, the corresponding code. So what I'm seeing here now is the source code that is responsible for this cross-site scripting vulnerability. And this is not some fake static example that we, um, that we put somewhere. This is the actual source code from the juice shop itself, right? So we are using a pretty sophisticated uh, mechanism of marking the actual code, uh, putting markers in it. And then um, when you open up this kind of coding challenge, then it will basically go and load exactly the right code um, code snippet. It will even remove lines from the code which might spoiler too much, right? Because in this, in the actual code in the juice shop, there's of course some stuff running that validates if you successfully exploited the hacking challenge, right? To give you the notification and, and uh, increase your score basically. This is all removed. So from the user now basically has the task to find the the line of code or multiple lines of code which are responsible for this uh, cross-site scripting vulnerability. So uh, let's see, I could, I could try out. Maybe, maybe I'm guessing that this data filter here, that's, that's probably an issue, but it's not, right? So that, that wasn't right. Well, if I look a little bit closer, I mean, this, is, this one is pretty, pretty obvious, right? So there's, some call to a bypass security trust HTML function. Hmm, maybe that is responsible for this whole for this whole XSS disaster. So let's submit this one. And there's confetti again, and we basically solve successfully solved the first half of this um, of this exercise. So now the second the second part of the coding challenge begins, and that is trying to find a proper fix for the problem. And for that, we are using um, a code diff view where we basically um, show the original code, but with the changes that we think might be the correct fixes. And we offer different fix options for you to choose from. So you can, you can also choose if you want to see this um, line, by, line by line, or you can also switch to a side by side uh, comparison. Um, the screen is often not wide enough for that. So by default, it's line by line. If it's very long code snippets, you can also reduce the overall length by just limiting it to the responsible lines here if you want. So let's see. First fix option that is offered, replace trust HTML with trust script. That sounds great. Second option that it presents to us is replace it with trust style. Third one, trust resource. Hmm. And the last one is don't do that at all and just use the query parameter as it is. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm guessing again, okay, this, this might be the right solution. Yeah. So going with this trust script, ah, unfortunately it's not. Okay, well, never mind. Let's pick the obvious solution, which is not playing around with bypassing security in Angular, right? So let's submit this one. And we successfully solve the challenge. We get confetti again. And now if we close this, we get this little 
um, button over here marked in green. We can we can launch it again and take a look again if uh, if we want. But uh, this this coding challenge is now uh, formally solved. You can also um, only solve the first half and do the, the the rest later, right? For example, if I if I'm starting the coding challenge for the login admin challenge, which is which is about a SQL injection issue, then after loading the snippet, which takes a moment, and if I go through this really care really carefully, I might notice that we have some SQL query being uh, concatenated with parameters from the request here. That doesn't look so secure. So let's see. Probably that's the, the evil line of code. If I submit this, right, I can now close my, my window here and it will tell me that I solved half the coding challenge already. Right? So that's that's basically what we uh, what we added. And there's at the moment, I think it's 20 for 24 out of the 100 uh, hacking challenges, there's coding challenges available. So let me just for completeness sake, show the entire list of all the challenges the juice shop currently has, right? Which is 100. And you can see uh, quite a few of these grayed out uh, coding challenge buttons here. So how did this actually come uh, come to life, this feature. This was our Google Summer of Code project um, of this year. And I, as our student, basically implemented the whole thing with some assistance from, uh, from Yannick and myself as mentors, where Yannick actually did a lot more work than I did because he had pair programming sessions with Ayas and everything uh, quite several times. And yeah, I have to say, this is a Google Summer of Code, and Simon mentioned that before, that is really a fantastic way of getting new features into open source projects. So we will definitely continue participating in that if we, if, if we, if we can. So fireworks for Ayas and the mentors of this lovely project. Good. So let's talk about uh, a few future enhancements. That, um, that we plan for this whole um, um, coding challenge feature. First of all, we want to add a separate, uh, let's say progress bar or maybe a pie chart or donut chart or something like that to show how many of the coding challenges you actually solved, right? So the, the scoreboard of the do shop is already quite crowded, you could say. Um, so, I mean, adding adding a, a separate a progress bar, maybe up here or somewhere where there's some empty room left, that's probably fine. At some point, I think we, we will have to do a redesign of the scoreboard, uh, especially because it's also having some performance, is, performance issues by now. But yeah, I think it's important to actually show how many of the coding challenges you you did. So that's a, that's a very basic enhancement that, enhancement that we want to make. I showed you already that we have this nice tutorial mechanism that will guide you with some quite rather easy to write scripts through uh, through certain hacking challenges. And we plan to also have such a tutorial script for the coding challenges. Like either, for example, if you if you launch the first coding snip uh, coding challenge ever, then uh, maybe it will automatically give you some assistance. Or maybe there will be some button where you can uh, can basically uh, decide to launch it in a in assisted mode, where the um, where this little bot actually helps you to understand. Okay, what do I have to do here on the find it screen with selecting the line of code and then next selecting the fix, etc. So I guess it's a pretty pretty good way to actually uh, help help people use it if they're not familiar to the juice shop already. Another thing we plan to do is actually calculating the accuracy um, with the, which the users actually solve these coding challenges. So um, that, that's something that is not possible with the hacking challenges actually, um, because they are very specific in their, in their victory condition, right? So you cannot really distinguish failed attempts from correct attempts. 
but with the coding challenges, you can because you are submitting a few lines of code that you selected for the first part and you are submitting a fix that you think is right for the second part. So we can basically just count how many attempts a user made before they actually hit, uh, hit the right option, right? And um, this might actually help to distinguish um, users who really take some time and do this, these exercises carefully and others who might just click around and just submit uh, stuff uh, without really looking into it. Currently, I'm not planning to show this um, statistics of accuracy on the scoreboard because it's not so interesting for the users themselves. And it would be actually quite hard for us to persist properly because of our, of our uh, data model for the challenge progress. But this might be an interesting information for the, um, for example, in the training or, um, or um, um, uh, I don't know, university lecture setup, right? So if, if, the, if the trainer or if the, the, the professor actually gets some feedback from the, the students or participants, if they are just clicking around or if they are actually taking, taking the exercises seriously. Which is why we plan to submit this kind of accuracy information um, to our solution webhook. Um, the, the current solution webhook that the juice shop has looks like this, uh, or the payload looks like this, and it will be triggered when you solve one of the hacking challenges. For the coding challenges, there's no trigger yet, but we would actually want to add that. Um, the idea here is this is something that the juice shop server can send to an arbitrary webhook that you can define, and that could be your own, some implementation you have to actually do some statistics and maybe draw a dashboard of progress of your entire student class, for example. And we would like to have the same for the coding challenges, and then on top with this accuracy information so that um, you can basically distinguish trial and error users and, and serious, uh, serious people who try to actually understand what's going on in the code there. Um, another thing that we already have for the hacking challenges is a pretty straightforward cheat detection that basically measures the time between uh, how, how long it took for you to solve one challenge after the next after, after the previous one you solved, right? So, and depending on the difficulty rating and some other criteria like challenges which are directly connected or might be solved together um, um, because they, they are linked in some way. Um, the juice shop will basically calculate similar to a spam score, a value between uh, one, uh, zero and one to actually rate if it thinks you cheated um, with the hacking um, exercise, right? And we could have something um, similar with the, with the coding challenges. So if you are basically submitting attempts at such a speed that it's quite obviously a script, then we could actually rate this also as, as a likely cheat uh, attempt, right? Again, this is something that the, the users themselves do not see. Um, this is only happening, uh, this is only visible on, on the back end of the juice shop. And it can also be, like you saw here, uh, it can also be submitted to the, to the solution webhook. So again, a trainer might have some, some idea using this information uh, if, if there are students who are, who are just messing around or if they are actually seriously trying to learn something. And then we have two other feature enhancements possible for the challenges, for the coding challenges themselves. So when you, when you submit the wrong line of code, when you, um, when you, when you try to find um, the vulnerable place, if it's a long code snippet, that might actually be quite difficult. And there are some challenges right now where you have to select multiple lines and that makes it even more difficult to actually find the exact right uh, lines that we uh, want you to select, right? So the idea is to, to add some, some hints. So after you submitted a wrong line, you might actually get a little hint shown that tries to help you out. And here you can see some draft hints, which, which, I, which I created for, for this local XSS or this DOM XSS challenge that we just saw, right? Which we just did with the, with the um, cross-site scripting. And for example, this last hint, right? Uh, with, hey, where do the developers fiddle with Angular's built-in security model? Then this is a pretty, pretty direct indication of, okay, maybe it's about this bypass security trust HTML function call. So this 
if if we add some feature like this, um, that it might also be something that you can then configure for the juice shop if it if it uses the hints or if it doesn't show them, because maybe depending on on your uh, your setup, if it's a I don't know if it's a CTF for example, maybe you don't want to give these hints out um, to people and they should actually find out on their own completely. So that that would probably be something that you can can uh, fine tune if you want these hints or not. And similarly, in the fix it phase of the challenge, we could, after you submitted a, a fix, we could give some feedback on the selection, right? For the wrong fixes, uh, we could actually do something like tell you why this is maybe not a not a proper proper solution, right? For example, uh, for these bypass security trust mm -hmm, options, which are which which don't make much sense. Uh, we would actually tell uh, tell the user, hey, uh, this is this is just changing the scope of the sanitization, but it will probably not do any any uh, not help against the actual um, cross site scripting vulnerability. And then for the correct solution, we could then add kind of an explanation why this is the best way to actually solve this, right? And then maybe even have some link to some more doc, uh, information about. Uh, DOM XSS or, or depending on the vulnerability, um, yeah, some some other additional resources. So basically, Juice Shop is evolving a bit into a more uh, more almost into a learning platform than just a vulnerable application which you can play around with. So, looking at the time, seems still good. Uh, yeah, my timer that started automatically with the slide deck says I have six minutes left which is great because I have one last slide, uh, which is my personal favorite in all presentations. That's the juice shop success pyramid, um, which shows a few interesting uh, stats about the project. So over time we had 80 contributors already, which is really impressive, uh, I think. Um, juice shop is a flagship project and um, yeah, we are, we are pretty, we are trying to do our best uh, to, to have good code quality, good test coverage, and uh, also good security, to be honest, so that, which is why we have a core infrastructure initiative um, best practices medal in gold, which is quite amazing. And I, heard, I, I, I was told that it wasn't an easy decision for them to actually give us the, the gold medal because normally they, rate, uh, they, they grade only actually secure open source projects with this, but um, I was, it seems I was able to convince them that all the intentional vulnerabilities of the juice shop don't count for this, for this assessment, right? So, and the most interesting part here in the, in the statistics, of course, is our downloads. Uh, so we also have a, have, a, have a nice statistics website by now, but you, as you can see, uh, juice shop has been downloaded uh, 93,000 times from GitHub, uh, 30,000 times still from SourceForge, where we mirror to, and incredible 33 million times from, from Docker. I was told that contains some accidental uh, image pulls, but uh, that, that number is still quite impressive. So I, I, even if it's just 10%, which is actual users, and the rest is just accidental uh, traffic on the internet, I'm, I'm still fine with it. So yeah, like you were told before, there's a Slack channel dedicated to the flagship projects, which you can use for the Q&A after the session. I will be there for 30 minutes and answer any questions you might have.